Amiro actually mentioned just now that I'm an anesthesiologist. So what I do for a living is that I put people to sleep. Not only that, I make sure that they don't remember too. So it's now half past four. You've had a very big uh, lunch. So if you're feeling sleepy, it's not your fault. It's just that I'm an expert in this. Now, <laughs> uh, one other thing that I do uh, is actually we administ administer pain relief medications. And the stuff that I work with is like 1,000 times more potent uh, than what the, you know, the recreational drugs are. So I can assure you that this is going to be painless. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about me. I'm going to talk about uh, my journey. I'm going to share uh, uh, my journey uh, as I was uh, working in a hospital. And uh, what I'm going to show you is just a collection of pictures that I took. Uh, one other thing, apart from the, all the acronyms there, I, I'm also an amateur photographer. So these are all the pictures that I took as we were doing our jobs. Right. Ooh. Oh, that was fast. Um, Everybody likes selfies, so since you were doing a lot of selfies there, uh, this is actually my selfie. Uh, it, it tends to be very interesting, you can see, only see the eye. Anyway, if you go into a hospital, you might not even remember the anesthesiologist because this is how we portray ourselves, you know? You see the spectacles and the eyes, and I'm sure nobody actually remembers us. Well, partly because of the medication. But the other thing is that I don't really speak to people. So this is the most words that I actually uttered. Because usually when I meet my patient, I would just say, this is going to hurt a bit. And then after that, they go. <sighs> so uh, I'm surprised that you're still awake. <laughs> OK, we are very good in our work. Even though the patient is asleep, one of the baby actually gave me a thumbs up. This is what we call the ultimate aim of patient centricity. Even though they are unconscious, they know the service is good. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about today is actually about designing a system. I know the anesthesiologist doesn't actually get involved with system design and things like that. But because of the changing needs in the environment of technology now, we doctors are going to be uh, sort of like replaced. Anybody here ever heard of Watson? Yes, you do? Yeah. Now Watson is actually working in a cancer center, uh, giving doctors decision support in terms of what to use when a patient has cancer. What it does is crunches the number, go into the, uh, what do you call that, probability of success and give. If you give drug A, uh, the chances of success will be about 20% and things like that. Now, I don't see that technology is going to replace doctors, but they are going to change the way we do work. And this is one of the initiatives that we are doing now. Right, I used to work here. Um, now, uh, I'm going to use this uh, as my example, uh, as a pilot for what we've done. Uh, in designing a patient-centric, uh, what do you call that, healthcare system. Now, a lot of people, when you go to hospital, you look at technology, isn't it? CT scan, MRI, all the three-lettered acronyms, you know? MRI, CT scan, PET scan. Uh, and most of the time, this causes the patient to be uh, seen less as a human, as shown in this picture. Where is the patient? Ah, where is the patient, by the way? So most of the time, we don't see the patient, but you can see all the staff is busy looking at technology. Got one guy looking at the computer there, another guy looking at another machine. Um, the one, the furthest most with the green gap just beside the screen is the, anesth uh, the anesthesiologist. She's very beautiful, but then with the mask, you can't really differentiate, isn't it? For all you know, she might be a man, isn't it? Yeah. But this is the, the state of the uh, current state that we have now because the, we don't look at the patient as a human being. But that causes a lot of problems in terms of cost. Uh, the cost is actually going very high. In terms of uh, litigation, there's a very high litigation in US. It's coming to Malaysia, but it's not here yet. So we need to change uh, the practice of medicine from just looking at the patient as a disease entity, I mean, you've got diabetic, you've, you've got hypertension, uh, you've got thyrotoxicosis, you know? It's like a lady that has a disease. And that is a big problem, essentially.
Now, I took this picture. Guess what? Uh, the the uh, dark blue colored guy that is holding his hand like that is actually one of our uh, surveyor. And what he did was inside the operating theater, he asked, if there is a fire in OT1, how do you go out to the emergency uh, collection center or where people actually uh, gather together to run away from fire? Because we use oxygen inside the OT and oxygen and fire doesn't go really well. They go boom. Yeah. yeah. So rather than have, you saw the picture of the orangutan just now, we really don't want that, isn't it? Yeah. So, and this is a good representation of the state of the hospital here because if you ask about patient centricity in a hospital, this is something that you will find. A lot of people have got different ideas of what it is. And the, the, the opinions will be divergent. It will not be convergent. So that is actually the biggest barrier. Remember the talk, uh, breaking barriers? So that's the biggest barrier, the staff barrier. Initially, we thought that we can actually use technology to overcome this. Unfortunately, we were wrong. Now, this is another picture. Uh, same thing, uh, I'm actually uh, explaining how our information system is working to one of our Joint Commission uh, accreditators. Now, doctors, when they are treating the patient, they are information mongers. Essentially, we take information from the patient, we elicit the, the signs and the symptoms from the patient, and then we formulate a plan, what medication to use, what procedure to give to the patient. If you have a, a, a burst abdomen, a burst uh, organ inside your abdomen, are you going to die? Are you going to live? How long are you going to spend in ICU? Those are actually information related to hospitals. Now, before this, all these are actually kept inside papers. And you know papers have a physical uh, presence, only one person can share it. You will not even believe how we quarrel and actually uh, fight over the patient medical records because there's only one, everybody wants it. So if you see a, uh, like an ant trying to, you know, swarming over sugar, there's something like that. So what we try to do is use technology to have a better distribution. And this is one of the examples uh, that I can show you. But be to make that work, these are some of the examples of the flow sheets and the uh, graphical representations that we have to put forth. This is before we actually embark on our project. These are all siloed information that exists in multiple forms all over the hospital in many various forms. Uh, some of it is in paper, some of it is in electronic, the others are in pictures and some in, in my presentation slides. So what we need to do is bring it all together. Now, so one of the first thing that we had to do is to get the doctors in line. So, and this is one of the activity that we did. We bring all the doctors together, showed them the paper records, and then showed them how bad it is because how difficult it is to get information from the paper records. And uh, this is, uh, if you look at the clock, oh, the clock is actually obscured there. That's about 10 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it's actually at night, 10 o'clock at night. So now they know the problem. And from there, we actually go into a brainstorming session. We do a lot of design thinking, uh, brainstorming using post-it notes, and we go to posh places, uh, trying to get them to relax and then uh, show them that this is the work they have to do. And after going through the brainstorm, they actually presented the um, <coughs> a plan or what they can do. Since the, uh, what do you call, plan come from them, do you think that they're going to resist? No, isn't it? Because if it was somebody else's plan, we really love it when administrators actually try to give us a solution. We just resist it. Even though it's good, we just resist it just for the sake of having fun with the administrator. And But this sort of like changes it. Uh, we change it rather than it becoming a P word, it becomes an opportunity of improvement. Ah, so that was even before the presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, but then again, we have to sort of like bring everybody together. In this uh, example, I've got nurses, uh, our uh, administrator, the allied health comes together to learn a, lang a new language. Uh, it is a modeling language known as Archimate uh, 2.1, where they actually uh, learn to put the drawings, you know that very bad 
thing that we had just now all over the place. So now they're putting it together in one place, which is actually an uh, a server or a repository. And uh, after they've done that, we actually bring back all the big consultants and come over and go through it, listen to the ones that had already done the, the work, and then after that, they sort of start signing it off before announcing it. So what we did was we asked the senior consultants to actually sign it off and present it. So do you think that they're going to be resisting it? Of course not, because now it is their idea now. So, and this is how it looked like. It is becoming more neat. One of my colleagues actually told me that this looks like a circuit board. And this represents the journey of the patient from admission until discharge or death. Yeah, people die in hospital. But even though you die, you still need to be cared for, isn't it? Just can't leave you there, you know? If the cops actually woke up and walk out, that's a big P word, isn't it? It's not an opportunity anymore. <laughs> okay. And the number two is actually the imaging that follows the, the journey. And number three and four is actually the landscape. Number three is about uh, scheduling. Number five is actually the roadmap of what systems that we're going to put in place. Uh, don't worry. That's the worst uh, or the most complicated diagram in this, uh, in this presentation. So rest assured. Now I've already uh, moved to another hospital. It's a 900-bed uh, teaching hospital. And we are going to do the same thing there because uh, the pilot for the first hospital, which is a 400-bed uh, single disciplinary hospital. And we found that since it works well there, I handed it over to another group that is going to continue it. And they're going to have a one hell of a time trying to make it work. And then I'm moving on to another hospital, which is a 900 bed, uh, which is closer to home. Uh, I'm from Kelantan, by the way. This is in Kelantan. So we just had the meeting the other day. The, uh, what do you call that? Because I'm a technology sort of buff, and I'm supposed to be the one uh, showcasing things. And that's the reason why I've got like three, four things in front of me, uh, just to use, you know, to dazzle them, you know. Every time. Now, one thing about doctors, uh, uh, whenever they don't listen to you, you have to confuse them first. After they, conf they are confused, then you show them the correct way. Otherwise, you will have the whole day trying to fight with them. And it's not really good. So, in summary, um, it is just a matter of perspective. Most of the time, if we look at things as a big complicated things, uh, we tend to be overwhelmed. Okay? We couldn't see the greatness in us or the greatness in the organization. But what we see is a lot of P words. Ah. Rather than that, we should actually look into the O word, opportunities. These are the opportunities that we can actually make uh, use of to change things. And change can actually occur in a good way. It's actually my journey. Thank you. <laughs>